water so now we'll discuss some characteristics of brake fluid these characteristics are much important to be used in a vehicle characteristics of brake fluid what are these characteristics first the most important characteristics is boiling point since a brake fluid is subjected to a variable temperature inside various components of the vehicle uh, maximum temperature is experienced when the brake fluid passes through the wheel cylinder of a drum brake or it is in the caliper of a disc brake so at that temperature your brake fluid should have a boiling point so that it should not vaporize at that temperature okay so it should have a relatively or it should have a high boiling point okay now according to some quality standards quality standards refer to break two types of boiling point first is wet boiling point and second is uh, your dry boiling point wet boiling point means boiling point of the fluid after absorbing a certain amount of moisture okay boiling point of a fluid after it have absorbed a certain amount of moisture and it is relatively low as compared to dry boiling point okay then the next property is viscosity viscosity is our next property what about viscosity your brake fluid should maintain a constant viscosity under a wide temperature range constant viscosity viscosity should be constant under wide temperature range why it should be constant because uh, what is viscosity actually it is the frictional force so if your viscosity is not constant throughout all the components so there may be some uh, uh, gaps or there may be some compression sort of a thing in or irregularity sort of a thing in your brake oil in your brake fluid passing so your viscosity have to remain constant throughout the temperature range of your vehicle okay and uh, this property is important in when we talk about abs system anti lock braking system okay then uh, this property is very important in uh, traction control also okay so in these this system viscosity property is important it plays a major role then third characteristic which we can discuss it's corrosion what corrosion uh, deals with uh, your brake fluid must not corrode the metallic parts or the metallic components like calipers wheel cylinder okay not corrode then there are some additive al additives also which are added to the brake fluid which are corrosion inhibitors so that it can inhibit the corrosion okay corrosion inhibitors are added then your silicone based fluids are uh, less corrosive okay silicone based fluids are less corrosive these were the properties about corrosion then fourth property we can discuss about force property that is compressibility this is one of the major properties which we discussed in the definition also so your fluid brake fluid should be must be low compressible even with varying temperature even with varying temperature okay and this property is important to ensure consistency in the brake pedal feet because if there is incompressibility or irregularity in your brake fluid then uh, there should cannot be any consistency 
in the brake pedal feet okay you are compressing the brakes which will not be continuous then the fifth property we can talk about the last property which is service and maintenance so service and maintenance if we talk about then uh, if we talk about glycol ether based oil glycol ether based brake oil it requires servicing or it requires replacement every one or two years okay it should be replaced in every one or two year okay under non racing condition and under racing condition it have to be replaced in a short period of time also then uh, if we talk about uh, this only glycol ether based so it should be replaced because it have we talked about additives some uh, uh, anti corrosion additives also so since uh, these additives are added to glycol ether based oil so they also get degraded in due course of time that's why service and maintenance is required in glycol ether based oil in every one or two year and uh, also they are hygroscopic in nature that is they absorb moisture so since they absorb moisture so they start corroding the metallic parts also so uh, in the due course of time they absorb more and more moisture and that water is harmful for the metallic components that's why service and maintenance is required in a short period of time in glycol ether based oil then if we talk about your silicon based oil then uh, silicon based oil ideally requires less maintenance because they are non hygroscopic silicon based oil less maintenance because they are non hygroscopic okay and actually ideally silicon fluid should be filled it should be used in non abs system only because and ideally it should be filled in the system where glycol ether based oil have not been used because silicon based oil is hygroscopic it requires dry condition and your glycol ether based oil is hygro uh, is hygroscopic means it absorbs moisture so this non hygroscopic oil it faces difficulty to remain in that component in that condition that's why ideally we should not use silicon based oil in uh, in the components where glycol ether based oil have been used okay so if we these were the characteristics of brake oil the major characteristics we discussed about then we are talking about the components the components of uh, various types of brake oil uh, we'll discuss it in a table only first i am writing the types of brake oil here first i'll discuss dot 2 then i'll discuss dot 3 then i'll discuss dot 4 then dot 5 and then dot 5.1 here i am writing the dry boiling point here i am writing the wet boiling point here i am writing the viscosity limit and here i am writing the primary constituents of the component of the particular oil primary constituents okay so if we talk about dot 2 type it have a dry boiling point of 190 degrees celsius and wet boiling point of 140 degrees celsius it have uh, no particular viscosity limit primary constituents are castor oil and alcohol majorly butanol uh, is there in this type of uh, fluid dot 2 and it is red crimson fluid red crimson fluid is there okay then uh, dot 3 it is 205 degree celsius is its dry boiling point then uh, wet boiling point is 140 degree celsius uh, its viscosity limit is 1500 mm 2s mm 2 per s then uh, if we talk about primary constituents it is glycol ether glycol ether is the primary constituent of 
dot three. We'll talk about dot four. In dot four, dry boiling point is two thirty. Wet boiling point is one fifty five degrees Celsius. This viscosity limit is eighteen hundred mm two per s. And primary constituents are glycol ether or borate ester. These are the primary constituents. Okay, then dot five break oil, two sixty degrees Celsius, one eighty degrees Celsius wet boiling point, nine hundred mm two s is its viscosity limit, and silicone is its primary constituent. Okay, let's talk about dot five point one, two sixty degrees Celsius is its dry boiling point, one eighty degrees Celsius is its wet boiling point, nine hundred. Mm two s, same. Is it viscosity limit and glycol ether or borate ester is its primary constituents. Now one note is there that uh, this wet boiling point is defined at defined as three point seven percent volume percent of water or water by volume. Okay. Well, you can remember this was all about your brake reservoir and brake fluid. So I hope this video was informative to you. Okay, thanks for watching.